Alrighty, so uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have had their first child. Congratulations, uh, Harry and Meghan. Uh, we don't have a name, uh, and the birth information that I found online is May 6th, 2019 at 5.26 a.m. in Windsor, England. So uh, with that said, assuming that this is the correct information and it's not going to get changed later because somebody in the press gave us the wrong time accidentally. Um, uh, with this chart, the child being born uh, is a first house Taurus, and um, he will have a lot of uh, a very special and very close bond and sympathy with his father because his father carries a moon in Taurus. So they're very simpatico in a lot of ways. So this child is extremely important um, to Harry. Now, um, with that said, Venus is the ruler of the child's chart. Venus is in Aries in the 12th house, which is kind of an uncomfortable position. Um, it is squaring Saturn. And more importantly, Saturn, uh, Saturn is at the top of this chart. Um, and it's in Capricorn and it's retrograde. So his ruler squares Saturn uh, on his mid haven. So in many ways, this child has, is carrying a tremendous amount of karma. Uh, but for the collective. So this is not about his transgressions in previous lifetimes, if you believe in previous lifetimes. His uh, his trip here on life is not about his personal transgressions as much as carrying, carrying uh, the burden of karma for the collective or many of us. So he will be more of a symbolic figurehead uh, than the Queen of England is in a lot of ways, or than uh, Diana was. So he will come to symbolize or represent something um, that is very important for the rest of us as we work through our own uh, group karma, as it were. Now, with that said, he's got Mercury in the late degrees of Aries. Um, <laughs> um, it is turning Jupiter in the eighth house. So some of the things that we can expect with Mercury in Aries uh, is a tendency to be very candid and frank and blunt um, <laughs> and direct. Um, because if you know anybody with Mercury and Aries, they're really good at speaking their mind, sometimes too much so. Um, with it in trying to Jupiter, which is known for its own level of unrestrained candor, uh, we can expect a lot of shoot yourself in the foot sort of communication um, because he's not he's not as politically correct or delicate um, as he could be mostly because this particular configuration won't see a lot of um, won't see a lot of benefit in it and also too because of the eighth twelfth house emphasis I would expect this child to grow up and have a very salty mouth um, a good humored one but salty nonetheless now some things that are very important about this chart and i'm gonna just so you guys know i'm gonna do this chart in more detail when i can get the computer up and running you can look at the chart with me um but some things to know about this chart saturn remember right now saturn is within orb of the south node of pluto um, which we're all feeling on a large level right structures institutions land masses sorry um you know the 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 greater structures and pillars that hold up society are literally, um, you know, kind of disintegrating before our eyes or being challenged or really putting through the stress test. So this is a remarkably um, tense time for a lot of us because we have to be flexible and ready to ingeniously think on our feet to, to do critical evacuation or critical repairs at the last minute to large, large structures that uphold society as and reality, as we know, because it is Capricorn um, and Saturn. So for him, the reason this is important in this chart is he carries this in his 10th house. So he is, again, the figurehead of the symbol of something much larger than himself. So he is here uh, to shoulder the burden of collective karma in a lot of ways. Um, so heavy is the head that wears the crown may be an understatement uh, for this person as they grow into adulthood and come in certainly and most especially by the time they hit their Saturn return, which is around 27 to 29. So it will be interesting to see how his life plays out with these particular aspects. It will not be uh, easy or happy. The other thing with this particular chart setup is this is somebody who's prone to melancholy. Um, so this is a very serious, somber person uh, and they take things very, very seriously. And so there's a lot of deep thought that goes on and anybody who does any kind of deep thinking can tell you it's very hard to be happy-go-lucky when you overthink things. Um, 
so, you know, there is some of that as well. And I'm sure uh, that mood regulation, you know, in, in, in the face of this kind of chart that he's carrying is going to be challenging, you know, along with all the external circumstances he is going to be forced to bear witness to and participate in in his lifetime. Um, he does have the moon in Gemini. Now, the moon is conjunct Alcyon, which is part of the Pleiades constellation. This is not, um, again, a happy-go-lucky position by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so the moon in Gemini typically gives us a uh, very ch uh, witty charm, uh, very flexible, light on your feet sort of approach to life. But with it in the Pleiades constellation, and certainly conjunct Alcyon, it brings with it a lot of other things uh, that are not necessarily so light and fluffy. So these, the, he's got a very special lifetime ahead of him. Um, more than, oh, sorry. And I know you would say that, well, you know, he's a royal. Of course, he's got a special lifetime ahead of him. But no, it's not. It's not that simple. So if you think about all the royals and the royal families across the globe, you know, they pretty much go through their life unnoticed and unimportant to anybody except themselves. Um, and they don't contribute anything remarkable. They don't represent anything remarkable. There's nothing symbolic about them except that they got born into the lucky gene club, you know, and got really affluent parents. Um, but other than that, they're, they're nothing. They're just placeholders in the world, right? But on occasion, you get royals like Princess Diana, for example, who became very important in the collective consciousness because of what she represented and her lifetime and her departure became very critical in changing a paradigm or making a paradigm shift in our perception about something and many things. So in this case, Princess Diana was, you know, very significant um, or had a very significant lifetime that had nothing to do with her being a royal, but was made more visible because she was a royal, if that makes any sense. So it's the same thing for him. He's got a very important role to play in the future and evolution and how we're moving forward. And his being part of a royal family will only lend more visibility to whatever it is that he represents. Um, so it will be interesting. It will be interesting, but his will not be a peaceful lifetime by any stretch of the imagination. Now, also, too, with this particular chart, he's got Mars in Gemini. Mars right now is out of bounds and it's opposing Jupiter. So there's a lot of issue uh, with this particular placement by transit and in natal charts for babies born right now um, with knowing when enough is enough. There's a, a real issue with knowing when to pull back, you know. Um, so excess is an understatement uh, with these particular personalities and also with these particular times. So in transit, one of the things that we're looking at with Mars out of bounds opposing Jupiter, and it's all making a T-squared and Neptune, is there's this sense of everyone trying, uh, clamoring and going to war, but nobody really being sure what they're going to war for, except propaganda, um, or going about it. So clumsily, it looks almost like a Three Stooges episode, except the entire army is made up of the Three Stooges. So it's just, it's that kind of um, overconfident, overreach, but disorganized, lacking focus, and nobody really being sure what they're doing, and a lot of it being based on misguided or misplaced faith and confidence in things. Whew, that was a mouthful, right? <laughs> um, so this is operative in his natal chart, and this is going to have a lot to do with, uh, well, I, I need to, I literally just now eyeballing the chart as we're talking. So this is all kind of off the cuff. I will have to look at this more later uh, to get a better picture for that. But that's, those are some themes that are operating with this particular thing and that moon in Gemini. And the last thing I'm going to say um, with this chart, r literally right off the top of my head, first look, is that the first two to three years of this child's life are critical. So we we want to see what happens in, these, in the second or third year of his life, um, you know, and hope and pray that he makes it through that and lives on to adulthood. And then again, the next major uh, episode of huge significance, at least for the rest of us, um, or visible to the rest of us, I should say will be around the Saturn return 27 to 29. And the final thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to let you guys go because I've got to get some stuff done today, um, is that one of the things that's also very notable about this chart is that uh, his death, when it occurs, now, later, well off into the distant future, whenever it comes, uh, will inspire 
a lot of tears and not just in the personal family members. So uh, his presence on this planet is going to be very, very significant and very symbolic for a lot of reasons and for a lot of people. Um, so his passage is also going to have just as much uh, significant value to people who are not related to him as it were. Um, so it will, it will, it will represent something for the rest of us. So interesting chart, interesting chart. So I will, um, I will get back to the later so that I can get the chart set up so you guys can kind of walk through it with me, or I'll just do a little report. I apologize. This is so short, but I wanted to get up there because you know, I just, I literally just signed on the computer and saw that he was born. So I wanted to run a quick chart for you guys. All right. Talk to you later.